Alright, I think everything's all good. Hey guys, what's up? This is John aka Jin 4576 for Totally Testing and it's Thursday so it's a stream day for NHL 16 and my be a GM mode. Um, so, the last time I left you guys at this, um, I was pretty much going through the preseason of the new season. Um, so I just fast forward through that and I was gonna go a little bit deeper into the season but game number one's against the Flyers. How can we not play Devils and Flyers game number one? So I figured, you know, why not start, start off with that. Um, I'll show you my lines really quick. And not much has really changed from last week. I have Henrik, Puri, and Camilleri on the top line. Zajac, Palmieri, Stepinak on the second line. Josephson, Klo, Boucher on line three. And then Zach Boychuk, Pavel, Zaka, and Braden Point as my line four. And as you, as you can tell, both these guys are rated for elite. So I'm trying to get them, at least get a lot of games with them for NHL, like the NHL time as much as possible so that they can um, live up to their potential and somehow climb out the ranks of Lee Stepniak or Ryan Klo or Puri even. Um, on defense I have Adam Larson and Damon Severson who is an 87 <laughs> in this all of a sudden and he's rated as elite which is pretty cool. Um, you have Andy Green, John Merrill and then Matt Carl and Matt Bartowski Bartkowski as your six, and then John Moore is like a seventh defenseman kind of guy. And goaltending, I have Corey Schneider and Keith Kincaid. And Schneider's a 90 now, which is pretty cool. Alright, so let's get right into this. So, a lot has changed in the last week or two since we did the NHL update. Um, obviously, New Jersey is now out of the playoffs. They've been out of it for quite a while now. Uh, in line to fall, well, fall upwards, I guess you can say, into in the tank standings. Um, so, in the Atlantic Division, you have Florida, who has pretty much clinched the division. They're at 101 right now. Uh, Tampa Bay is at 95. They have clinched a playoff spot. And Detroit is at 93. They can clinch a spot if they win tonight. Tampa Bay has New Jersey right now. If they beat New Jersey, they will have the second spot locked up. It is currently 1-1 in the second. Sorry, that was uh, another um, new one that I've never <laughs> never heard before, which is pretty cool. And I guess it's because I had Zaka in the lineup, so awesome. Over in the Metropolitan, Washington continuing to crush. They're at 117 points. Um, Holtby, if with a win, could uh, tie, I believe, Marty Brodor's record, but they're losing, last I heard. Uh, Pittsburgh is at 102 with a seven game winning streak right now. In the last 10, they're 9 1 and 0. Ridiculous. They can't they went from being written off in the in the playoff race to now just crushing it. And if it wasn't for the fact that Washington is crushing it even more or crushing it since the beginning of the season, then they would probably get first place. The Rangers, who are kind of in a funk, have 99 points. They're in third place. All these teams have clinched the playoff spot, by the way. Uh, with a win, they will clinch the third spot, and they're, they will face the red-hot Pittsburgh Penguins. And oddly enough, they're playing the New York Islanders tonight, so maybe they will do a little bit of tanking. Um, we'll see. I mean, on Twitter, I... I see a lot of um, a lot of Rangers fans kind of getting upset. The Rangers doing really dumb plays, so they might be tanking. But you know who the hell knows? I guess. 
Um, so we hit the wild card after that. The Islanders are clinging on right now, and even though they've lost a couple of goaltenders to injuries, they are hanging on with 97 points, and they might draw Florida, which may be a good or bad bad matchup, depending on how you see it. If you see it as Florida being hot and being a bad matchup, then that's one way of seeing it, but you can also see it as they're not playing the Washington Capitals, and you know, the Capitals have been hot all year. They might actually um, win it this year. So you can see it that way, too. No. Oh! I was hoping Paul Mary would do a flat horizontal slide rather than just go locking up vertically. That was just bad luck on that one. So, the big race now is for the last spots. Um, you have Philadelphia who's in the second wildcard spot right now at 91 points. Uh, past the red line is Boston with 91 points, but Philly takes that spot because they have more games in hand. They'll have one game in hand by the time everyone else does plays their games because they'll have a makeup game against the Islanders at the last last day of the season. Oh! And Boston can still get into that Atlantic Division spot. They're only two behind Detroit, but if Detroit gets two points and gets the win, then that option is gone to them. And they are hoping that they did not just waste picks on Lee Stepniak and not make the playoffs. Like, that would be the worst. But I could see it happening. But if you ask me, I'm hoping that Philly just loses. Um, they haven't been the greatest. They lost the last the last game against Detroit, which was a big one, to be honest. And now they now they made the match against Toronto tonight big, and apparently they're not performing well there either. Um, at last I checked, so a little bit of uh, disarrayness in. Philly right now as either the defense or the offense is really killing them. Mason seems like the only one that's actually shown up the last couple of games. Ugh. But um, I won't speculate anything in the East because that's like a little bit um, a lot of moving parts in that so it's going to be hard to, to know what the matchups are until maybe tomorrow night or the next couple of nights. No. Oh, nice block. Oh, another one big save by Corey Schneider. Terrible shot. Oh, that's offsides. Over in the Western Conference, let's take a look at the Pacific Division and Give props to Anaheim. They had a really bad start. They had... Oh, it took them until December to really turn things around. And now, since they turned it around, they have first place in the Pacific now with 99 points. Granted, they are tied with LA right now with 99 points as well, but... Anaheim wins the tiebreakers for the moment. And who would have thought that they would fight back? Uh, but, you know, when you have Getzlaff and Perry back to their old selves and you have secondary scoring, it's going to happen. Oh, boy, Chuck almost got a breakaway. Get it out. Third in the Pacific is San Jose. Oh, hit the post with a shot by Zaka. San Jose is in third place. They have 96 points. Um, they have a slight chance of getting first place, but it's looking like they will be the odd man out th in that race. If Anaheim and LA get one more win or two more points, then it's going to be impossible for them to catch up, catch them. So it looks like they will be playing a battle for Cali 
series in round one. It's just all about who they're going to face. And although LA and Anaheim are two different um, teams, Anaheim more offensive, speed type team, and LA more big bruiser type of um, team, I wouldn't want to play either of them, to be honest. Because with San Jose, you have Martin Jones, who has done a pretty good job this year. I'll give it to him. But I don't know if he'll be able to keep the like Anaheim scorers at bay. And the toughness of San Jose has always been called to question when it comes to another hard-hitting team like L.A. So... It looks like it's going to be a lose-lose for San Jose. At least on paper. Uh, no. Oh. All right. Come on. Oh! Take a shot there. Nope. Just waiting until my guys get back. And there's no one in particular. And I iced the puck. Maybe. Nope. Great job, Cammy. Too many guys to try to get that puck through. That's fine. Oof, hi. Nope, nope, you're not getting this puck. Oh, the Bermuda Triangle. Four, three, oh, Merrill, maybe? Nope. That. Give it one more hit, and that'll be the end of one, and it's 1-1. One, one. So, in the Central Division, things have gotten tighter. Uh, Chicago has hit a little bit of a lull. Um, they are in third place, but we'll get to them in a second. Dallas and St. Louis are tied for first right now with 105 points. Uh, Dallas owns the tiebreakers at this moment, so they have first place. Chicago is at 101, and I believe with a win by either one of those, they'll pretty much seal their fate and have to play whoever the two seed is. In the wild card, you have Nashville with 94 points. They've been there pretty much for a good part of the season. And Minnesota won the race against Colorado. They went into a little bit of a hot streak in the last couple of weeks to secure that last playoff spot. Colorado kind of hit a lull and fell off. Although now, now Minnesota's kind of hit a lull heading into the playoffs, so they'll be looking to get out of that before the playoffs actually start. Because they'll be, they'll most likely, oh, god damn. That was good. They'll be, look, they'll be playing either Dallas, which is not good, or St. Louis, who they might be able to beat. St. Louis is kind of like the San Jose Sharks of the Central. They kind of get their get out early, so that'll be um that'll probably be the better matchup for them. Um, but pretty much everyone in the West has earned a playoff spot. It's more about positioning at this point. Although I am very pumped that there will be a Battle of Cali um, matchup round one. That is really cool. Those matchups are always fucking good to watch. Oh, Stepniak, wrong hand in this. Oh, nice stick lift by Merrill. That was clutch. 
And now we're going back this way. Oh, Zajac could not get the backhand in. God damn it. There you go, Stepniak. Oof. Oh my god, it's so good to have all these move options now after playing NHL 96. Oh my god, I appreciate them so much now. <laughs> so, it looks like whoever wins number one in the Pacific will face Nashville. Um, I kind of hope, but it's probably not going to happen that San Jose gets the first spot and they play Nashville round one because that there has been a rivalry for maybe not the last couple of years but like in the mid 2000s where Nashville and San Jose would have some very very nasty round ones or round twos like these those two teams do not like each other and it would just be great to see them go against each other round one but I mean San Jose is gonna have to do a lot and a lot of things are gonna have to happen for that to happen Oh. But if it's Anaheim taking on Nashville, I think Anaheim will take care of Nashville. Pekka Rene has not been Pekka Rene all season. He's been pretty good, but not not how he was last year. So it might be um it might be a tough uh tough out for Nashville. But they do have good scorers. They have decent defense. As long as they can, even though this is obvious, outscore the other team, but I would say out offense the other team, they might be able to do it, but I mean, when that offense is Anaheim, it's going to be tough. And if it's LA and San Jose, man, so many storylines for that. Like, you have Martin Jones, who used to be the backup for LA, going against his old team. The team that thought that they wouldn't that he wouldn't that they wouldn't see Martin Jones ever again because they traded traded um traded him to Boston initially at the draft and then Boston traded them to San Jose which was insane and I'm sure LA is really thanking Boston for that move ah oh, one too many moves oh Boucher ah. Oh delayed on that one but I mean there's that storyline there's obviously the rivalry between San Jose and LA and you know it would just be good oh I might have deflected in my own guy <coughs> who would win that matchup though I don't really know. It could be um it could be LA. I mean, LA has been known to win these tough games and they are a tough team to beat. But I think San Jose, they don't have to out offense. LA, they have to they have to be tough. You know, LA is going to try to bully you and if they're going to take dumb penalties, then let them take dumb penalties. And if they're going to goat you into penalties, don't do that. Like, you just got you got to be smart, and you got to play tough. And I don't mean you have to, like, break their face in or bring in a guy like Rafi Torres or any of that kind of junk. Or or Hale, Michael Haley, I guess, is the new comparison. You don't need to bring, like, a tough guy like that. But you just have to be tough. You know, guys like Joe Thornton who are the nicest guys in the world they have to they have to be tough like they can't take shit from them and I think that will go a long way into them being the LA Kings if it comes to that and then over in the central I think if it's da if it's Dallas or St. Louis I I kind of think Minnesota's in trouble um I just think that they might have a slightly better matchup against St. Louis, but it's still going to be tough. I do not trust Devin Dumnik. I, I do not trust 
any of that goaltending tandem at all. Dubnik might get hot, but right now he is not, and that is not good. And they have decent offense by that number 11 guy and Miku Koivu. And Ryan Sear is a decent defenseman, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to to beat whoever ends up first in the central. It's it's very tough. And if we go based on the standings right now, it'd be St. Louis and Chicago, and that's going to be a good one. Oh, this is not looking too good for me. But you have Chicago, who is slumping, but if, oh, excuse me, if their offense ha doesn't slow down, which it hasn't, you can ask Boston that over the weekend. Chicago literally demolished them with six goals. But if they can play, take a page off of Pittsburgh's playbook and just outscore guys, they'll be okay. Um, I, their goaltending is a little bit shaky right now. But that's really their only weakness. I mean, in, in the same Boston game, Boston almost came back from six goals they only got four but I mean usually four goals in a hockey game is kind of enough unless you score six so that would be the only real weakness to Chicago at this point so St. Louis would have a chance and then we would have a new champion at least oh god So now that we talked about the teams that are going to have a little bit more of an extended season, let's talk about the teams that are going to be done in, by Sunday. And um, the little bit of the raffle for Austin Matthews and the tank standings. Oh, no! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ooh, saved by Schneider. Nope. Uh, Toronto still on top with 67 points, but it looks like they're going to get two points from the Flyers, possibly, if they don't blow it in the next period or so. Uh, Edmonton is right behind them at 69, so it is a big two points, so Toronto will probably want to let Philly win, a, win that one. In third place, you have Columbus at 72. They were doing so good the last couple of weeks. They got into a good winning streak. Things were good feeling good but then the last week happened and they kind of dropped a lot of games so they are back down to the basement of the NHL oh come on that was totally still in uh, you have Vancouver who's been sitting in pretty much fourth the whole entire season with 73 uh, Winnipeg is at 74 and then you have the Flames Arizona, Montreal, Buffalo, Ottawa, and New Jersey is holding the 11th spot. And I believe it's Colorado and Carolina if you want to roll out the rest. Um, if you're, ooh, I got some double echo. I'm sorry about that, guys. I forgot about that. But that should be all gone now. Um, so, anyway, uh, New Jersey has a chance to fall higher into the tank standings, um, depending on what happens with the game they're playing right now, which is tied, and their last game against Toronto on, I believe, Sunday. Um, if they lose those two and Ottawa wins or even Buffalo wins out, uh, New Jersey can fall pretty much as far as ninth, maybe eighth. So even though it's highly unlikely that they'll get Austin Matthews, they'll at least increase their chances a little bit for getting maybe the second or third pick. But even then, like getting anything inside the top ten is still pretty good too. Especially with the time of possession, but one lucky shift or one lucky bounce, they're right in the opening face off of the third period has started it. Oh, what a goal by Cammy! 
And we are right back in it with a lot of time to go. Bring this back. Face off win, and now what will they do with it? The Flyers have possession in their own end. Dvorak outlet up the middle to Drew. Good second pass to the slot. Great glove save. You can ask for a better opportunity in the scoring. Oh, come on, Puri. I got you for your speed, baby. Oh, hit the post with the shot. Oh. Brandon Puri almost cashes in. Oh, trying to tip that one, but no sale there. So, I kind of don't want to talk about the Devils anymore because they're not going to make it to the playoffs, but the Albany Devils are. They are certainly going to make the playoffs in the AHL, and I'll totally talk about that for a little bit. Um, so, first off, even before we talk about standings and whatnot, um, I'm so happy that the Devils signed a three-year lease at Albany, so they'll still be the Albany Devils up until the 2018-19 season, which is so cool. Um, you know, uh, having a minor league hockey in Albany has done so much for the area, like just the hut, like the Capital Region and the Hudson Rally Region, like they pretty much thrived on having Albany as a hockey team. Whether it's the River Rats or the Carolina-owned River Rats or the Albany Devils, like, it has been great. And I know attendance has been crappy only because, well, the teams have been crappy the last couple of years. Um, but this year, they are, they are making, they are making some um, real waves right now. They are in second in the East, only first to the Toronto Marlies who have a ton of points. Of 105 to be exact. Um, Albany is in second with 94, so pretty much Toronto is going to be is the Washington Capitals of the AHL. Um, Toronto's hit a lull because most of their guys are playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs right now, so I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but when that when their season's over, that they're going to be pretty high powered, and they have Alex Stalock who is technically an NHL goalie. I mean, an NHL backup goalie, but he is an NHL goalie, so he's going to be a tough get. Come on, no. Oh, cover that! No! Cover that! Oh, jeez. Albany right now is slide to play either the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, which is the um, Islanders uh, farm team, the Utica Comets, who are the Vancouver Canucks uh, farm team, and they made it all to the all the way to the Calder Cup Finals, I believe, last season. And oh, Racco Gudas, goddamn! All right, we're gonna have to press the issue here. Um, the third team is the Portland Pirates, who are the Florida Panthers farm team. Uh, they all have 83 points and are all around that area. Um, Bridgeport, I believe, owns the tiebreaker, so technically they'll, they'll be playing Albany in round one. But there's still a couple games left for that to get all sorted out. Alright, come on. Yeah, get that shit out of here. Um, the Albany Devils, even though a bunch of their guys are up with the big team, have not really missed, bit, lost a step. Um, they have lost maybe one or two more than they probably would have. But for the most part, they've been pretty consistent. Scott Wedgwood who has had a couple of games with New Jersey with New Jersey who played very very good against with New Jersey is back with Albany and he hasn't missed a beat uh, Mike Sislow after I believe 
this game with Tampa Bay or even Sunday with Toronto will go back to Albany and he will gear up for the playoffs. Uh, Pavel Zaka is in the works of signing a PTO. His team um, in the OHL, the Sarnia Sting, was eliminated earlier. So he will probably sign a PTO. And I think with those additions um, and with guys like Voltec Mozik coming back, Mozik is a plus 23 in Albany right now. I think, I think it's going to be a good run. And... I hope they have a pretty decently deep run. Not because um, it'd be cool if they won the Calder Cup. I mean, it obviously would be cool to win the Calder Cup. But it's going to drive attendance through the roof. Like, the last time they went to the playoffs was a couple of years ago. And even for those two games in round one where even Albany was outmatched by St. John's at the time. It was like a one eight seed. A lot of the people from New Jersey came. They had to open the the rafters up to accommodate the seats, and it was crazy. I think it was like the first, uh, the highest attendance that they ever had in Times Union Center for an All Be Devils game. I mean, it kind of balanced out the all-time lows for you know attendance for an All Be Devils game during the season, but it was just really cool. Oh no! Bar down! This one's looking really, really bleak. But, um, I do hope that the Albany Devils, um, have a deep run just so they, they can get some really good revenue and maybe stir something up and, like, you know, maybe the fan base will grow after this season because, like, the team has really taken a turn, like, they turned the they turned the corner and then they just shot out of that corner like a rocket. So I'm pretty psyched um, to see a couple of games at least. I don't know if I'll see all the ho home games, but I mean I live I live like 40 minutes away from there, so I'll at least try to see a couple of them. Oh. 420 to go and I'm losing. This is not good. Um, I did touch on the IHF Women's Tournament last week. Um, that whole tournament is over now. Uh, unfortunately, Team Japan has been regulated down a level. Um, they lost all their games. Ex yeah, they pretty much lost all their games. Um, they did get a point, one of them was in overtime, or a shootout, whatever you want to call it. But, um, I gotta give props to Nana Fujimoto, because for most of those games, maybe one or two games it was a blowout, but for most of those games, she kept her team in. Uh, the most noticeable one was that Team Sweden game, where Sweden was pretty much shooting lights out at Fujimoto and she kept her team in it and I hope a lot of uh, more players from Team Japan or Japan in general go to the US and play in the NWHL because it it really is helping like it 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 really showed with uh, Fujimoto she is definitely a next level um, player like like, she is definitely above... Oh, I might as well have the empty net there. But she might as well uh, be a, next, a level up above everyone else in, on her team. Because it is just... It is no coincidence that she could constantly keep her team in. She is literally like the Corey Schneider of the NWHL. It is really ridiculous. But um, they've been uh, showing like a couple like players resigning and stuff. I guess everyone was on a one-year contract or whatever. So I'm kind of hoping that Fujimoto resigns again with the Riveters, and you know, more players from Japan will take the opportunity to play in the NWHL because I think it's it's a good way to gain more experience against higher competition, even if you lose all the time, like. It's all about that experience and to get better. Oh, 
A tip by Pavel Zaka and he gets his first NHL goal with 0.5 seconds left. Pretty meaningless, but it's his first. He goes wide, hits the board, and then just a shot across the net mouth, and Zaka's there to just deflect it in. That's okay. Can't win them all. <laughs> New Jersey's got a lot of work to unacceptable. Forget the score, just the effort. Oh god, Druin just scored for Tampa Bay. And it's three to one. So it looks like the the Druin call up has really inspired him now. Um they had to call Druin up because Stamkos was out with a blood clot, so it kind of forced the Eisenman's hand, but I mean, I think I think the kid is responding now, and hopefully they can figure something out, or trade him to New Jersey or something. Whatever. Alright, so let's check out the stats, and we'll put a bow on this one. The shots are 32 29, which are close. The hits, Philly with only one, while New Jersey had 13. I think the number should have been reversed. Um, the passing percentage, I always like to notice 79 to 55. That's pretty much um, the normal, I guess, for me. And then no penalties for either team, which is amazing. Uh, your three stars are Adam Henrique with a goal and assists, Scott, I think, Lauten with a goal and assist, and Adam Larson with two assists. Losing effort, though. Alright, guys, um, that's all for tonight. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. Um, this weekend, I think I might do another Turtle stream, possibly. Um, or I will be remodeling my setup so I won't be able to stream because everything will be unplugged. So one of the two things are going to happen. Um, but yeah, I'd like to thank you guys again for listening and watching and all that stuff. Uh, so this is Jin4576 for Totally Testing. I'll see you guys later. Peace.